All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Damon Jones. I'm the New York representative of Blacks and Law Enforcement of America. And we're here today with other organizations, and, and, and I will announce them out. Uh, Charles Billups, Chairman of the Grand Council of Guardians. Noah Leader, 100 Blacks and Law Enforcement Who Care. Darren Green, Blacks and Law Enforcement of America, Long Island Chapter. And Corey Begeese, Law Enforcement Alliance. We all are black law enforcement professional organizations from throughout New York. And we came here this morning to voice our outrage. We came here this, this morning to demand accountability of our fellow officers that crossed the line. We came here this morning because we see too many incidents of police criminality, not police brutality, to communities of color and communities that are disadvantaged economically. When you use a theory of broken windows, we have seen that the theory of broken windows is broken. It has not increased the, the, the quality of life to the communities that it is applied to. Only thing it is doing now is making a strained relationship between the community and the police department. All these organizations that you see here today, we work tirelessly in our own times to try to build that bridge, to try to reinforce to the relationship between law enforcement in the community. But when we see police management that do not hold the police officers accountable of violating policies and procedures, it makes the good cops, the good law enforcement officers job even worse. Because it's, it's hard to do that when they see people that are in blue look like they're getting special treatment because they are law enforcement. So we're here today to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hold these officers accountable. Have respect for the, for the badge and the shield that we as black law enforcement officers wear proudly. I'm going to bring on Charles Billups from the Grand Council of Guardians. Yeah. I'm Charles Billups and chairperson of the Grand Council of Guardians. Um, today, I, today I stand in solidarity with these brothers here and recognizing what happened, what recently went on. Um, it, it's, it's not hard and it's very simple. The, the issue is now is that it, it was wrong that was done. The chokehold was done wrong. Other incidents that are now popping up are being done wrong. The question comes up, um, what is the police commissioner going to do about it? What is the mayor going to do about it? The issue is now is that it needs a message, a strong message, needs to be sent out throughout the department, saying that if you are caught with these heinous acts, that you will be disciplined, you will be suspended on the spot, and and you be brought up on criminal charges if necessary. That's right. So these are the, this is the message that needs to be sent out. I mean, not just to the uniform staff, but also letting the community know that um, um, we won't let you be brutalized by wrong cops. I'm, I'm, I would not stay here. I would not stand here and say all cops are bad. Most of them are, do, are doing their job. But then you have those times where those who get caught doing wrong, excessively harassing people, excessively forcing themselves on individuals, stopping people for no reason at all. I'm, I'm driving through Brooklyn this morning, coming here, and I, I find two brand new officers on the corner harassing somebody because he had a suitcase. They wanted to stop, and they literally started going through his suitcase. That is straight up harassment, for no reason at all. The person just minding his business, they pulled over in a, in a, in a uniform car, and they started going through the guy's suitcase. So I stood there and I watched for a while, and I asked the question, what did he do wrong? They, literally, the officers told me to mind my business. Is, is this the kind of message we want to send, particularly to the black community? Because that's where it happened, at in Brooklyn, on Pickens Avenue. So we, it, a message needs to be sent, and it needs to be sent strongly. I, I encourage the police commissioner, I encourage the mayor to stand up, and for once, he talked about progressive change here in this city. He talked about making a difference here in this city. If you really want to make a difference here in this city, suspend the people automatically, bring them up on charges, and if necessary, fire the individuals. Because I hate to say, if it was a black officer that done it, if it was a Hispanic or Latino officer that done it, they would have been brought up on charges, they would have been brought up on criminal charges, and they would have been disciplined to the fullest. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we are standing here and we are saying this. It, it needs to stop. 
it needs to be brought to attention. A strong message needs to be sent throughout, the, throughout this department, police department, saying that if you get caught wrong, we, we're going to do you wrong. Cut dry. That's basically what it comes down to. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have no leader representing 100 blacks in law enforcement who care. Good morning. Uh, first off, it really doesn't need to be said, but we are law enforcement officers. We are anti, we are against crime and criminality. We support law enforcement, but when law enforcement acts inappropriately, they need to be dealt with. It was spoken earlier about accountability. Our outrage, not only what the officer did in applying an unauthorized prohibited chokehold, but we're outraged over the response of the mayor and the police commissioner. Police Commissioner Kelly has now, uh, Bratton, I'm sorry, Police Commissioner Bratton, I get the two mixed up now, <laughs> uh, has stated this is a supposedly chokehold. The New York City Police Department guidelines 203-11 defines a chokehold as a place in your arm or wrist around the throat or neck applying pressure that has a potential to obstruct or prohibit the intake of air. It is clear that the officer placed his arm around Brother Gardner's neck, applied pressure, brought him to the ground, i.e. a chokehold. Why is the police commissioner now calling this a so-called chokehold? Right. Where's the accountability? That's right. The EMS worker was suspended by his department for failing to do his job. Why are these officers, two officers, when there was more than two involved in this incident, why are these officers only modified? They should be suspended. Where's the accountability? The mayor, the other day in the press conference, implied or indicated that there are some instances when a chokehold is appropriate. The New York City Police Department guideline says a chokehold will not be used. That's right. It doesn't say should not. That's right. It doesn't say may not. That's it right. says will not. That's right. So instead of the police commissioner sending officers to Los Angeles to receive training, we need to send our police commissioner who doesn't know his own definition of a chokehold, and our mayor, who's above the police department, right. back to the police academy mm -hmm. to understand the definition of an inappropriate maneuver, i.e. chokehold. That's right. Where's the accountability? That's right. We have no confidence in police commissioner Bill Bratton. We have no confidence in That's our right. mayor as it relates to this incident. That's right. Because their response is showing that there's no uh, uh, accountability. We applaud additional training. But training was not the issue in this case. It wasn't because of a lack of training. The use of force is taught throughout the department. The use of force is stressed throughout the department. These officers, I'm sure, were familiar with the New York Police Department procedures and practices as it relates to the use of force. This was excessive. Definitely. Not by my definition. All you have to do is view the video. These officers should have been suspended. If an officer is caught lying in an official hearing, he's suspended. If a court officer is caught a wall, he is suspended. If an officer disrespects the supervisor, uh, officer, he can be suspended immediately. Why, when applying a, a prohibited chokehold, which results in the death of an individual, why aren't these officers suspended immediately? That's right. Police Commissioner Bratton didn't get it 20 years ago, and he doesn't get it today. Thank you. That's right. Uh, next up to speak is Darren Green, representing Blacks and Law Enforcement of America, Long Island Chapter. Good morning. Again, my name is Darren Green, president of Blacks and Law Enforcement of America, the Long Island Chapter. And as my fellow brothers have all stated, being black law enforcement, it hurts us, it saddens us to know that we have to continuously stand on the battlefield and fight these issues, and especially for when they come from within our own respective departments or agencies with our fellow brothers and sisters. What I will say to you is that lack of discipline, as it's been said already, is the key answer here. The good old boys club is still good at work. That's right. The good old boys club, which really sends a message to the rank and file is that I can do whatever I want to do if I have power of the pen. I will be able to justify whatever I want to do because there will be no discipline because my boss may be part of the good old boys club, which will not put me in the hot seat, which will not allow me to be disciplined. So the rest of the rank and file will continue to do these things knowing 
that I won't get in trouble, that I can't get in trouble, because power of the pen precludes all of that. That's right. Will allow me to justify on paper what I wrongly or unjustifiedly did in the street according to my department rules and regulations or according to my training. This, these are the things that must be changed. We need to have these supervisors and inspectors all in the room and say that even when you fail to police your own, you too will be brought up on charges for failing to do the job that you should have done. We can no longer tolerate the good old boys club fashion from within the respective departments across New York State, within New York City. We are standing here saying that we will continue to fight this fight. We will continue to press these issues. Again, we want to stand with those brothers and sisters who do the job fairly every day. We want to continue to support them. But for those who do not, we cannot and will not condone power of the pen and misuse in policy and procedure. Thank you. Uh, next up is Corey Begues. He's representing Law Enforcement Alliance. Good morning. Again, Corey Pegues, co-founder of Law Enforcement Alliance, recently retired Deputy Inspector in the New York City Police Department, Commanding Officer of the 67th Precinct, last assignment. So I want, to I want to say three things. Lucy Cigarette, Marijuana Cigarette, Barbecuing in front of your yard. These are the three of the most recent incidents that has happened around New York City all violations, petty crimes that should not have happened, especially with the climate of us reading the newspaper and people are getting shot, people are getting robbed. There was a young lady just robbed in the elevator, all the news was all over. We need to stop these crimes. So with these petty crimes, quality of life issues, the New York City Police Department has made New York City one of the safest city in the world because of those type of crimes. But it's been 20 years. We beat the horse. We beat the horse down. When I was a cop, you walk down the street, people was urinating. They're not urinating no more. People was drinking open containers of beers. They're not doing that no more. People were congregating on corners, five or more. And they're not doing that no more. So at what point do we stop enforcing these petty crimes because it helped us, but now it's alienating the same communities that it has helped? It must stop. The broken windows theory is actually broken now. It's broken now. And we got to do something else because we got to bridge that gap between community and police. And when we say police, we're all black police officers, but we're talking to our brothers in blue. Those are the black cops, the Chinese cops, the Asian cops, the white cops, all the cops. All our brothers in blue that are good cops, we support you to the end of time. But the bad cops, we have no room. There's no room for bad cops. Cops got to come to work every single day and give 100%. Because guess what? When you give 99%, your mistake could cause a death. We gotta shoot 100 every single day when we go out there. And we're here to announce today, we don't support the lack of discipline that has happened. You got a right. cop That's in right. Bedford-Stuyvesant right. that stomped on the head of a handcuffed individual right. and the cop was not suspended. I don't know how much more evidence you need. You put a cop on desk duty that clearly stomped on somebody's head. What other evidence do we need he should have been suspended because people don't understand until you take money out their pocket. That's right. When you take money out of people's pocket, they trying to figure out how they're going to pay their mortgage. That's when they understand. Because when you make him understand, everyone else says, ho, oh, this is not a game. So we're expecting for the leadership of this department to come down forcefully on all the bad cops. And again, we want to make clear, we're not sweeping with a paintbrush that the New York City Police Department or the cops are bad, but we've been seeing some stuff that's really, really disturbing in the news lately, and it's for petty crimes. The chokehold in Staten Island. The man didn't have to die, he died. So guess what, somebody's culpable for it. In NYPD, there gotta be some checks and balances. Every, everything can't be right. We make mistakes, doctors make mistakes, lawyers make mistakes, but guess what? In Staten Island, right. last week and a half, some cops made a mistake. 
They made a big mistake, and somebody must pay for it. Thank you. And I just want to make something clear. When, when we speak on police criminality, what is police criminality? Police criminality is an officer that is trained by a certified institution of law enforcement and goes in the community and violates his training and policy and procedure right. of that right. Pacif Pacific Department. Mm -hmm. He is no less a criminal in the community himself mm -hmm. because he's violating the policies and procedure and his training. And that's what we call police criminality. Mm -hmm. Every law enforcement officer should be against police criminality. Mm -hmm. Every law enforcement, we are not, we are not anti-police or anti-cop. Mm -hmm. We are pro-police mm -hmm. and pro-community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if a civilian was on video and had pictures of stopping a man in the head, that would have been enough evidence mm -hmm. to take it to the grand jury. That's right. All right. Now why is that not, why is that same rule not applied to that cop? Why is not that same rule not applied to other law enforcement that cross the line and break the law and then the department wants to slap them on their hand? Mm -hmm. We have to send a message. We have to send a message to the bad ones. We have to send a message to the bad ones. So what we're saying here is enough is enough. It, ha it has to start today. We need what they call uh, behavior modification because if more police bad ones see other bad cops come out with handcuffs on and get suspended and losing money in their pocket, mm -hmm. it will change their attitudes and their actions mm -hmm. towards the policies and procedures. Okay. So this is what we're asking, Mayor de Blasio, this is what we're demanding from Commissioner Bratton, because Mayor de Blasio ran on oversight and law enforcement. He got elected from communities of color throughout the, throughout the boroughs on oversight and law enforcement. Right. Right. And this is his test. Mm -hmm. Because if not, this might be his last term when it comes to black and brown communities throughout New York. Thank you, and if you have any questions. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. In, yeah, you yes. can, yes. Our position is, regardless of the race of the officer, regardless of the race of the victim, it was inappropriate, it was prohibited, prohibited behavior. What should have happened is not happening. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're outraged of our police commissioner. These officers should have been suspended immediately, pending an indictment, and pending a trial. So regardless of what color the race or the officers were, and we have our notions <laughs> about what would have happened, <laughs> right. or whether or not it would have happened, Right. But regardless of the racial fact that it was inappropriate actions by the police officer and we feel the mayor's comment, his soft comment before he went on vacation, his inappropriate comment when he came back talking about the appropriateness of chokehold, which are, are not prohibited by the New York City Police Department, is purely inappropriate. This so-called liberal mayor and this uh, police commission that we have right now, we have no confidence in them because they have shown us through their failure to suspend the officers by uh, uh, his failure, the commissioner's failure to, to call this now a so-called chokehold, right. when his own definition and his own patrol guide defines this as a chokehold, it's, it's problematic and troubling. Any? Right. Yes, I have one more question. Okay. My, my problem with this whole thing is that I understand what you're saying, and I'm in agreement with y'all saying because y'all are the time officers and y'all are the justice. But Some of us are active. The issue, brother, is, is that when these things happen, these murders happen against black people. So you can't get around that. It is an issue of racism. It's an issue of racism in this whole country. Right. Okay. That's why this is going on. Yes, sir. Until we stand up yes, and deal with these people and use the language that they understand, they're going to keep on doing it. That's the issue. Thank you, well, well, thank you, brother. And, and, and that's why I said what I said. This is a test for Commissioner Bratton. This is a test for uh, the mayor because black, brown, and yellow people came out tremendously on his campaign of oversight and law enforcement 
and making the police being, being accountable. So this is a test for him to see what he does. And if he fails that test, this might be his last term. Thank you. Yes. Any other? Oh, oh, yes, sir. All of you have, you've got tenants all over the country. Are you hearing anything from other cities? I know there was a lawsuit in D.C. Transit officers put a chokehold on somebody. The opening day of the San Francisco Giant season, a chokehold was used in San Francisco. Are you hearing anything else from your fellow officers around the country that the chokehold thing has become necessary? Right. Spirit. I mean, in, in in different incidents, it's not a wave. It, it, it's, it's definitely not a wave. A, 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 a lot of police departments um, have 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 outlawed it, you know. But it's as the Pacific chokehold. It, it, it hasn't been you know a wave now since the. Since the Garner incident, you have a lot of people coming forth. You have a lot of people sharing video, you know, in, in New York. What about the CCRB, though? Well, Commissioner Rand said in his first time, in his six months in office, he knew nothing about Coco. Then he's not managing his police department well. They said they was 50, 58. Yes. Right. Yeah, but the CCRB, CCRB also stated that you said the number already about 58 cases, <laughs> and out of the 58 cases, you talking about less. You you're talking about less than, um, less. Put this way, less than a, a third of it, probably less to even lower than that, uh, ha have been addressed and actually been brought about to investigate on. So, so the question comes up now. You you mentioned 58, and they gave a number of nine. So, whatever happened to the other 49 incidents? Right. right. So that's the question that should be asking. Uh, exactly, right, right, exactly. Because right. the key thing is now is that it, it's a, it's what an officer can get away with on the street. That's right. And, and the thing is now is that everybody is not equipped with cameras. Right. Uh, everybody's not walking around videotaping or recording stuff. Okay. So you'd be surprised the number of of excessive force that's being used on the street to get what they want. It, 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 I mean, it even goes back to where. Um, no more than a month or two ago, they, they had overruled the idea of searching an individual. Cop not supposed to be going through a person's pockets, right. Right. but they still go through a person's pockets. That's right. So the question comes up now is, it, you know, how many numbers of incidents that happen like that, and how are they going to be addressed? So, so now when when somebody do complain about these incidents, and and they do come up with witnesses and have proof of this, the police department should look forward to move in on it and and discipline. It. And, and deal with those incidents to to develop that relationship with the community. Right. That's basically what it comes down to. Because if, if they're not doing that, it, the community lose faith in the police department, and now the whole department is now being singled out as as, as bad as I don't want to join, I don't want to be a cop, mm -hmm. I don't want to be a member because right. I'm constantly right. being brutalized. That's right. And and not not, not just that. You're talking about you know, over. I mean, overrunning our court systems with with unnecessary arrests. You're talking about large numbers of people who are going through arraignment unnecessarily. And, and the large number of our youth are now being singled out because they That's do right. have arrest right. record right. and That's they right. can't apply for civil service jobs. That's right. So That's it, right. it stems, a, a whole lot of problems come out of that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, yes. What happened to the gentleman in Staten Island? Could happen to me? Right. Um, very supportive of what you're saying. I'd like to know what's going to happen further. What's going to be your next action, the reaction, if you don't get any response from the mayor and or the commissioner? <laughs> well, I think all the organizations here are, 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 have, have a history of working strong in the community. You know, and and we all have different pamphlets. What do you do? What do you do when you stop by the police? How do you survive police confrontation? Where where we go into the schools and, and, and talk to kids? How they how they should act when 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 they're when they're being approached by police officers? See, because law enforcement have have their policies and procedures how they pro approach a civilian, but now the civilian should have a set of guidelines how to survive yeah, but, that confrontation. But, and, and on top of that, and on top of that, let me, let me give you a good example of what we are doing. Right. Um. Just recently, we we had members of mine, talking about four parole officers, who was upstate New York, who right. was harassed the same way right. by the Rampapo police. Right. Same concept, 
same harassment. In uniform. But on and, and, duty and in they uniform. Was in, and they was on duty at the time. But they was in civilian clothes. So what we are doing now, we are taking them to court. Right. We are suing them. So, right. so, so my advice to anyone in the community, if they feel they've been brutalized, if they feel they've been just misused wrongly in the police department, and, and you, you need to look at the idea of talking to an attorney and suing an apartment. Sure. As he stated earlier, the best way to resolve some of this and the best way to hurt them is in the pockets. But, but also, when, you, when we talk about hurting in the pockets, I mean, that's the taxpayer's dollars. Right. Right. You know, so, so this incident that Garner was killed over, what, a couple of Lucy cigarettes? Now it's going to cost the city taxpayers millions of dollars? See, it's 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 still a, it's back to the taxpayers and the voters to say enough is enough, mm -hmm. because it's not coming out of uh, Bratton's pocket. It's not coming out of City Hall. It's coming out of the budget of the city, which the taxpayers pay. Yes. Um, what, do you see a correlation between how this, the messages on this case, the correlation between this one and 20 years ago with the anti bias case? Yes. 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 Right. Yes. We do. And that's one of the reasons why. We're calling for a special prosecutor. Um, that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, because of the essential relationship with the local district attorney's office, where they utilize police officers to conduct their investigation, we say it should be the governor should appoint a special prosecutor or the New York State attorney should appoint a special prosecutor to take this out of Staten Island, out of the hands of the district attorney's office, and then and perform an investigation. We have, from 100 blacks in law enforcement who care, have no confidence in the Staten Island district attorney's office uh, uh, investigating this case. And uh, to your, your question, brother, also is that we thought we had a new police commissioner. That's right. We thought we had a new mayor. That's right. We thought things were going to be different. That's but right. But all we're getting is That's more right. of the same. That's right. And as I stated, the lack the, the, the soft response by both the mayor and the police commissioner is problematic. The refusal to suspend this, the, the officers involved in this case, is problematic. His statements now, calling this a supposedly chokehold, is problematic. Because he's speaking to, if it stays in Staten Island, potential jurors. The mayor, potential jurors are here listening to what the mayor is saying when he says that there's sometimes a chokehold may be, uh, uh, you know, appropriate when the police commissioner says it was a supposed chokehold. The potential jurists are listening to the mayor and the police commissioner speak, and we know what they're saying is incorrect. We thought we were getting something different, but all we have is more of the same, and we're outraged. I, I have a question to ask you all. My question is, why haven't anyone speak to the city council and to the recently appointed... Um, um, no, 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 the recently appointed... Um, um, in, um, the inspector general. Right, right, the inspector general mm -hmm. that's supposed to be looking over all this public safety act stuff. So the question comes back now, what is city council going to do about it? Because they mm -hmm. voted and they got it in there. The mayor appointed this individual. Right. Keep this in mind, To also. So the right. question comes back to now is, what is they going to do about it on this incident? Do, I mean, is something's going to be said? Is something's going to be done? This person was just appointed. You know, where is he? He hasn't spoken up. We haven't heard from him. We haven't heard from city council. And we haven't heard from the mayor's office the correct way either. And I would just add to that. At this point, we are looking at public trust. If the city can no longer trust the police officers that have been hired to do the job, I have made this statement repetitively and over and over again, okay? At some point in time, you're going to have a mass groups of people that are going to start trying to pick off cops. Why? Because we no longer believe in you and trust in you. So we ride around with that term, protect and serve, and we're not advocating for that. But let's speak truth. Let's talk reality. If we are not going to go out and really work hard, and bridging that gap between police and community, we are going to have a larger problem than we are having now. Because right. public trust is really important. And we would have hoped that the mayor and the police commissioner could do something immediately, okay? And even if it requires of sitting down with the respective black law enforcement officers that are here, okay, we would be more than happy to go on board and come up with some things to help them bridge that gap between police and community. Not with we, us. We wasn't invited. We wasn't invited. I would be invited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a meeting with Al Sharpton, a special yeah. meeting with civil rights leaders, but uh, once, uh, once again, black law enforcement organizations was not.